Welcome, my friends, to the 112th episode of the Sales Podcast. This is Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer, your host. If you have ever pondered direct mail advertising, then this is the podcast for you. I hear people all the time uh, bemoan the low response rate of direct mail marketing, but I never hear them talk about the ROI of direct mail marketing. Okay. And what that means is if you have an offering that is a higher ticket, okay, then you only need a very small percentage of people to respond and buy to make that investment, that cost, the expense of direct mail marketing worth it. Uh, it's too easy to sit around on your computer, play around with some ads online on Facebook or wherever and feel like you're doing some work that you're advertising. Um, but when you do direct mail, you know, it takes time. You've got to set it up. You've got to work on the envelope. You, you know, should you hand address the envelope? Should you, should you put a real stamp on it? Should it be a one page letter, two page letter, 10 page letter? Should it be a postcard? All those things take time. They take money, obviously, to get things printed and fulfilled and shipped. Uh, and so very few entrepreneurs have the time to go through all that effort. Now, the nice thing is because very few entrepreneurs have the, uh, the patience you know, and the forward-looking uh, mindset to get into this, that means very few of your competitors are getting direct mail pieces. So if you want to stand out in a crowd and cut through the noise and the clutter, then you need to consider direct mail, all right? And Craig gives some very good advice, some very simple things you can do to start, very affordable, uh, and then you can test things. And once you have some success, then you can expand it and grow. So uh, without further ado, let's bring on Craig and get into some direct mail marketing. Craig Simpson, the nation's leading direct mail consultant and coach, all the way from Grant Pass, Oregon. Welcome to the Sales Podcast, man. How are you? Great. Thanks for having me today. I, I am glad you you uh, don't do a lot of research, and without knowing me, you just agreed to come on this. You don't have any idea what you got yourself into, did you? I have no clue other than I know that we are affiliated <laughs> through Dan Kennedy, and I figured that was good enough. <laughs> All right, good enough. And that, that's where I ran across you, as we were talking about uh, before we started. Uh, I've been a long-time uh, Glazer Kennedy Insider Circle member, and I've been reading your stuff in the uh, big lesson of the month. Uh, and, you know, I'm coming up, this will be around 110th episode, but I'm about to publish my 100th episode, and I've had uh, some guys come on, talking about newsletters, stuff here and there, but not really dig into to direct mail, so, uh, so I thought it would be great to have you on, and, but for those that don't know you, would you mind taking a minute or two, give us a little thumbnail sketch of who you are and what you do, and, and we'll go down the rabbit hole? That sounds good. Sure. Yes. Yeah, so I'm a I'm a direct mail consultant and coach. I, I specialize in uh, only direct mail marketing. If you ask me some online marketing questions, I'm not going to be able to help you. Um, but direct mail is is what uh, my company does. We send out almost 300 mailings a year for large and small businesses. Some of them, you know, the large ones. Uh, you know, I work with the the nation's largest RV dealership, and I work with Beachbody, and and then I also work with some small medical offices and attorneys and CPAs. So we just in everything in between. So our thing is direct mail marketing and just helping people generate new prospects and customers through the mail. So that's why you and Dan get along, huh? Some uh, some anti online people. Well, I'm not totally anti online, but uh, you know we're we're uh, you know uh, direct mail is our thing. So when you say direct mail, I mean, can you elaborate? Because it's some people think newsletters, other people think, oh, it's that big oh, body yeah. postcard I got from my politician, you know, or the key I got in the mail from the local Ford dealer, and everybody knows <laughs> that's rigged. I'm never sure, sure. Far. You know, so uh, yeah. So when I talk about direct, about direct mail, yeah. So when I'm talking direct mail, I mean it is a it is some kind of solicitation that arrives in your mailbox, and it's the goal of the piece is to get you to respond and take some kind of action. Um, sometimes we're able to achieve that through a postcard. Other times it's a you know it's an 80 page sales letter. Um, but ultimately, what we want is to get one on one with the prospect and have you holding this tangible, physical piece of paper, mail, read it, and then either pick up the phone and call or come down to the store or go online. But whatever the call to action is, we want to make sure that we present a message in a way that gets you out of your seat 
or and get you on the phone or get you to do something because of this tangible piece of mail that you received in your mailbox. So it's it's more than a newsletter. It's not just general information. It's it's we're mailing something out with the hope of getting you to take action. Yeah, but Craig, you know my my son's girlfriend's father's neighbor talks about Facebook. And, yeah. You know, I can I can do that. It's free, man. I mean, it's free, and everybody's on it. You know, yeah. Doesn't yeah, it, you know, direct mail you know, is so expensive. It doesn't work. The response rate is so low. I mean, what other you know, objections can I give you? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Here's, I love I love when people say that because there are there are some surprising um, companies out there that are actively using direct mail. So if you were to name the world's largest advertising, online advertising giant, what would, it, what, would, what would you say? Who's the world's largest Google. advertising on giant? Google, uh, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking yeah, like nobody's bigger than Google, like right? Coca-Cola, Google's the biggest. Yeah, right. Google's like the biggest, right? When it comes to online advertising, I can't think of anybody bigger than Google, right? Sure. So did you know that Google is actually the seventh largest technology mailer in the country? They, they are up the, they're mailing so many mail pieces that they're up there with AT&T and, and um, Verizon and Dell Computers. Their, their volume of mail that they send out, and that's physical, tangible mail showing up in mailboxes from Google to businesses, makes them large enough that they're the, the seventh largest mailer in the nation. Now, who would have thought that? I mean, this expensive, old-school style of marketing that you have the, the, the world's leading, you know, uh, online company using direct mail to promote their online advertising services. Kind of crazy, huh? You know, I, I have gotten it, and I've actually taken pictures in the past and, and blogged about it. Uh, and they send some elegant pieces. Um, uh, this isn't some chintzy letter. I mean, these no. are these are boxes, like designed boxes, uh, with plastic inserts, with dials, so you can see how your ad spend calculates. I mean, I, I bet I don't, I'm based on their volume. I'm sure they get great deals, but. You know, postage and all. I've gotten one piece that probably would cost ten or twelve dollars. Yeah, and they'll also give you those uh, their cards for like a free, you know, a little card that's in there that says, you know, free um, hundred dollars worth of AdWords advertising. You know, so not only are they oh, spending money on the package, the they're, they're giving away money. Uh, I've got one here. I've been negligent in sending out, but I am intending to. But it's a postcard. Actually, from last year, I could I could send it now. They sent me 25 postcards. Someone wants to give that thing you sell to someone they love for the holidays, and it's already stamped. Uh, the postcard. 76 percent of people say they've searched online before making a holiday purchase. Let's talk about how an ad on Google can help turn a whole bunch of cyber shoppers into your newest customers. Hmm. So they sent me that pre-labeled, ready to go. Stamps already licked. On a mail piece, so, physical. Oh, yeah. Well, they sent me a box, and this is just one of many, and I, I had this sitting here. Uh, so this is one of many. So they've they sent me 25 postcards ready with a stamp. So all I have to do is send it to people on my list to get them to try Google. How about them apples? Yeah, it's amazing. So, <laughs> so you know, you wonder, you know, well, why should I use direct mail? Well, you got, you know, you got companies like Google who are using it. They're obviously savvy. Um, I don't know if you knew this, but Angie's List, which is, you know, all online, they've got a, a monthly catalog or, or um, magazine that they mail out every month. But their mm-hmm. their business is all based online. You know, I mean, there's just there, – there are dozens and dozens of, of massive online companies uh, that use direct mail. Facebook uses direct mail. You know, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like this hidden thing that – you know, everyone thinks it's this old media that nobody uses anymore, and it's dried up and it's gone. But the reality is, is in the back rooms, these guys are all using direct mail to help grow their online businesses. Okay, Craig, those are all big companies, and they have a lot of money. And, you know, I'm just little old me, and I can't afford $12 mailers, so direct mail is not going to work for me. 
Well, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I think that you, you know, anybody can complain about whatever. You know, they can say that it's never going to work, <laughs> but you got to try it. I mean, you don't have to mail out 100 million sales pieces to have a success. I mean, you could take your, your best 50 customers, do a mailing for under a dollar a piece, and get them to respond and give yourself a positive return on investment. You know, it doesn't have, direct mail doesn't have to be millions. It doesn't have to be in the thousands. You can mail 10, 15, 20 letters, whatever, whatever you want. I mean, whatever you've got access to, you can do a mailing, and uh, I think you'll be surprised by the, the type of response that you can get, especially if you're going to your own customers. I All actually right. got so, a uh, – Oh, good. go ahead. I was just going to say, I actually got a piece in the mail this week that was uh, it was a bamboo postcard, and it was just a happy birthday postcard. But it was made out of bamboo, it was wood, and it was, really, it was shaved really thin, and it, they mailed it out. And it's an actual piece of wood, and it just says happy birthday. And it's, um, and, and it's just simple, but it's a little postcard. It's wood, it's so it stood out. So there's all sorts of creative things you can do. If you've got a small customer base, you could do something like that, too. You could mail out a wooden postcard, you know, to 20 of your best customers, and they're going to get it, they're going to remember it, and they're going to do something with it. All right. So how how would you say somebody that's smaller start? Um, because a bamboo postcard, you know, says happy birthday, um, I can see long-term residual, right? Maybe in the next month or 12 months they'll think, fondly of me and buy something. Um, but like those 50 send out a $1 cost a year. Where do we send them? What, what does that small business owner has never done a mailer before? Right. I think the easiest place to start, actually I don't think, I know that the easiest place to start is your own customer, your own customer. So whatever business you're in, whether you're a dry cleaner or, you know, auto mechanic or information marketer or whatever it is, it, you want to mail your first mailing should go to your existing customers, and the the best thing to do is to try and get them to either come back to your store or to your site or whatever it is that you offer, and make them some kind of sweet deal so that they want to respond to the campaign and it motivates them to buy something else from you. So the easiest starting point is people who have already proven to like you, They're the people who have bought from you in the past and they've already you've already earned their trust. So that's where I would start is your, your customer, what we call your customer house file. So is that where, like, the code will say, mention CD123 when calling, operators are standing by. That's so they know which mail piece is working? Well, there's other ways. To, I mean, there's lots of different ways to track the mail pieces, but I think the simplest, you know, if you're just getting started, and, and you, let's say you mail out three different postcards, um, and you're trying to figure out which one works best, um, when you do the mailing and you're having the name and address written or printed on that postcard, you would have three different files, right, one with each group of, group of names. When somebody responds to the campaign, you could look them up on the mail file and find out which piece they received. Therefore, you, you know which one's working best. Um, that's the simplest, easiest, raw way to, to track the campaign. There's obviously more, you know, there's sophisticated ways to do it. I mean, you could do a whole bunch of different 800 numbers. You could do different URLs. You could ask for a different code. But um, the easiest to just match them back to the mail file. So just divvy up your, pull up your list of 100 and send the first 33 alphabetically, the first postcard, and the second and the third. Well, I don't know if I would do it alphabetically, um, but I would actually I would sort by zip code and try and make a sort of equal representation of gotcha. each zip within the within the file itself. But yeah, you want to split them up. Gotcha. Uh, and I mean, should they start with a postcard? Should they start with a letter? I mean, I well, no. I mean, oh, I'm not creative. I can't write a good letter. I'm not a writer. I mean, yeah. Well, I'm that's have an excuse. Well, there is excuses, you know that, that, that. You know, no, I mean, I would not start with a postcard in most cases. That, that's an easy one to start with because it's small, it's inexpensive, it's you know not a lot of copy. But the reality is, is you've got to, There's a lot of strategies that come into to using a postcard. So it's not the one that I would prefer to start with. I would say start out with a, you know, a two-page letter in a regular envelope. 
And if you're worried about, uh, you know, whether you can write copy that's going to get somebody to respond, well, it's time to invest in a, you know, $12 or $15 book on copywriting, right? I mean, you're going to have to put some effort in there to, to try and generate a sale. And then, I mean, obviously, if the list is small, just hand address it or have your assistant hand address it and, and send it out. Um, yeah, I mean, if you can, if you have the time to hand address them, you bet. And then you're doing a small quantity. If you can hand address it, that helps. Um, also using like a live, what I call a live stamp. It's an actual physical stamp instead of a metered indicia that you get at the post office. Um, if you're, if you're going to a specific group, let's say you're going to car enthusiasts, then you're going to want to get a, a commemorative stamp that has the hot rods on it right, because it's going to resonate with them. If you're going to seniors, go out and buy the Ronald Reagan stamp and use that one. Um, the, more, the more ways that you can connect and connect with your uh, prospects, the better. So, yes, handwrite it. Yes, use a live stamp. Use a commemorative one that they can relate to. All those things will help into getting your mail opened and um, getting them to respond. Mm-hmm. And, and just put it in a legal size envelope or should – they do it like with a on some letterhead, like a notepad kind of thing. If it's in a smaller, uh, so it's like an invitation or, or what? Wow. Well, there's you know there's there's never going to be a um, you know like, here's the perfect format that you've got to use. I mean, there's the thing is is it's got to be tested. And so, you know, what I like to do in every single mail campaign is always run some kind of test. So if you're doing your first mailing and you have 50 people that you can mail to. Split that list in half and mail 25 people one format and mail the other 25 something different. So maybe one group of 25, you're mailing them in a 6 by 9 envelope, and the other, you're mailing in a 9 by 12 envelope. You know, So you're doing something different between the two groups. And as you test and every mailing you do, you're going to learn which format and which set of copy and which headline and which offer works best. And so you can slowly begin to create what we call a control piece, one that works over and over again. And the goal is to always increase response rate and increase your return on investment. And it sounds like a lot of work. Can't I just run an ad in the yellow pages and, and start collecting orders? <laughs> well, you know, there's <laughs> strategies to that too. You know, it's it's everything in marketing is gonna be work, right? I mean you can't there's no there's no magic pill. You know, if you're going to do direct mail, you've got to study how to do it right. If you're going to do online marketing, you've got to study how to do it right. Um, same with print or TV or radio. I mean, you know, the cost to do a 60-second TV commercial day is, is astronomical. And, uh, you know, you can't just go out there and hope that you get it right. You've got to put some study and research if you're going to spend all that money. Same is true with direct right. mail. You got to do some studying up on it and, and learn the ins and outs so that you can do it right. Otherwise, it's not going to work, right? You know, you, you, so you, you've got to put some effort into it. Um, hmm. So I mean, is that where you come in? Because I mean, it, this is work. I mean, growing a business is work. But I mean, I just see so many entrepreneurs. I think they just kind of lock themselves away uh, and either bury their head in their work, you know, I'm good at this, I'm a good chiropractor, I'm a good chef, I'll just go make a new recipe and word of mouth will grow my business. But deep down, they're worried, you know, but they're, right. they're afraid to start because they're afraid to fail and look like an idiot and waste money and so they, they just never start. I mean, do, do yeah. they buy your book? Do they, do they have a program? I mean, how does somebody... Get their right. toe in the water, you know, to well, figure this let out. Me, let me talk to the business side first, and I'll tell you how the, the resource side. But I think, you know, as, you know, business owners, you know, if you are a chiropractor and you feel like all you can do is be, is be a good chiropractor but you're not good at running the business, selling the business, promoting the business, then the reality is maybe, you're, you, you know, you're, unfortunately you're not really an entrepreneur and you should go to work for someone else, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. But if you're a true entrepreneur – Inside, you have, you're wired in a way that I'm wired, and probably you too, where you want to grow things. You want to see success. And, and in order to get that success, it requires some education, some study, some risk, some testing. And um, if you're not willing to do those things, well, then you probably should work for someone else. Um, but 
if you do want to see those successes and you really do want to see your business grow, you know, in my case, if you want to learn more about direct mail, um, I've written a, a book called The Direct Mail Solution, um, and you can go get it at thedirectmailbook.com. And, you know, it's like, a, it's like a $12 or $13 book, depending on what Amazon's selling it for that day. And it's going to tell you everything you want to know about direct mail and how to put a successful campaign together. And I'm sure there's a book just like it out there for yellow pages and, and online and, and TV and all those things. So as business owners and entrepreneurs, you know, we should all be buying those books, studying them, and, and implementing them into our business. Um, is there any business that cannot use direct mail to grow? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, I think that I haven't come across one where I've I've said this just is not going to work. I think that I, I know I've come across some that that has taken a lot more work to make it work. Meaning, we had to do a lot of testing to find the right list, to find the right hook and sales copy. Once we found those things, we had success, but it took us some money and it took us some time to get there. I believe there are businesses out there where it's much more difficult to get into any kind of advertising um, than others. And then there are some businesses where it's simple. You know, um, you know I do a lot with, uh, with retailers, and I have like a chain of pet food stores that I work with. Well, for them, we use direct mail every month, and it's a piece of cake to get people to come into the store from some special coupon offer that we're, we're making that month. That's easy. There are other businesses where, you know, I have clients who want to who want to do mailings to, um, you know, Fortune 500 companies, and they want to talk to the CEO, who, you know, who who makes two million plus a year, and get you know get them to respond to some kind of campaign. Well, that's a lot more difficult than going to a retail and than mailing for a retailer. So it requires right. more sophistication and work. Right. But the, the payoff is bigger. I mean, the, the retailer True. may make a fifty dollars sale or maybe even a hundred dollars sale. But True. I mean, I, I, I sold a big business. I sold to Google. Uh, I sold to. Uh, I sold seven figures of stuff to Google, uh, and so it's worth spending a hundred dollars, maybe even a thousand dollars. That's right. Uh, over three or five or ten pieces over three or six months to get in front of that executive that can cut a check for a million dollars. Uh, so, I mean, do you think people are just too short-sighted? We're just too much of the instant gratification nation, and and people are like, well, I can I can do a Twitter post and see that <laughs> up, and then, you know, I'm going to buy a LinkedIn ad, and you know, I mean, uh, well, I just see that too much. But is that is that it? Oh yeah, you're you're, you're exactly right. I mean, people are too short, short-sighted. They want, you know, they want instant gratification. They want to do no work and expect for a good return on investment. Um, you know, it's, it, 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 it just takes, um, he goes back to, you know, my, my friend and mentor Dan Kennedy talks about, you know, he kind of makes fun of the, the crew that follows the four hour work week. You know, uh, there's very, 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 very few businesses who actually can survive and sustain that kind of, uh, method, you know, method of, of work. You got to put time and effort and energy and the guys that are the most successful are the ones that are working the hardest. And so I think that's true with advertising as well. You know, if if you want to really see people driven into your store from direct mail, then you got to put the time and effort into it to test it out, find out it's going to work, and be willing to spend a little money to make it happen. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, if you listen to Tim Ferriss, that wasn't even the title of the book. Well, that's true. You know, <laughs> the publishers and the marketers came up with that name, and he's like, well, okay, but – uh, yeah, that's true. A whole, a whole generation now, the last decade, is growing up thinking, yeah, that's how you do it. And it's, well, it's because so they read crazy. the title and not the book. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, literally. I mean, I talk to so many people, and you, you probably do too. You're maybe in a little different space working with more established companies. But, I mean, I, I'll talk with, with beginners. I'll talk with people that from the outside appear – quite successful, but they're calling me saying, holy crap, man, I don't know what to do. You know, things are not as good as they look. What should I do? Uh, and I think they've just fallen into this trap, you know. I just need to create a good meme and have an Instagram collage and share it at, at Pinterest, <laughs> and it's going to grow my business. 
Yeah, exactly. Oh. Give me a yeah, break. and it's rare. It's rare for something like that to actually work work out. I mean, I know that there's a few extreme cases where somebody's had some amazing success because of that, but the bulk of uh, you know business owners have not. And so, you know, the underlying theme of of you know my business is work. You got to be working to make things uh, make your business more profitable, and you just can't just sit on the sidelines and watch it happen. You got to make it happen, and so that revol- involves effort. Yeah. So you, you gave an example. You started out with, with Google. Uh, I mean, can you share a an example of, you know, a more down-home kind of business that, that has succeeded um, with oh, direct sure. mail? Yeah, and I, and I, you know, I touched in briefly on the, the retail store. Um, you know, it's a pet food store. There's 20 of them, but even on a local level, you know, if you just had a regular, you know, run-of-the-mill pet food store that's on the corner – um, you can use direct mail to drive prospects into it um, on a regular basis. Um, you know, I've worked with, uh, you know, gyms. Um, I have a lot of clients that have fitness gyms, right? And, and uh, in fact, I talked to one today. They've got a fitness gym uh, for women. They're based in, uh, in Southern Cal, and, and they want to find a way to get more women into the gym. Well, there's certain strategies that you can use with direct mail to do that, and it, some of those things involve – well, let's mail only to a three-mile radius around the gym. Let's, let's only target women of the primary age, 25 to 45, that attend the gym. Let's make sure that the mailing lists we get are made up of affluent women who make, whose household income is over 100000 a year so that we know that um, they can afford the membership. You know, and if we want to take it one step f- further, let's find women who fit all those characteristics but have recently purchased a beauty product therefore showing that they care about their, the way they look and their image, so therefore they're more likely to want a gym membership. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's uh, I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens of examples I can give you with how direct mail can help, um, help a business grow. So, like these gyms, I mean, do you just send a free week or a free assessment? I mean, no. So, so in that case, I mean, the the what the actual offer is changes by whatever industry we're in. Um, in their case, you know, our goal is to drive for a, um, a free consultation or a free workout session, and we actually give them the option. Do you want to you want to meet with us one on one for a consultation, or do you just want to try us out and check out one of our our group workouts? Um, you know, for for the say the um, pet food store, it may be, you know, we're offering uh, you know 21% off dog food this week. Next week, it may be something else. Um, right. If it's for uh, you know dentist, maybe it's the the whole teeth uh, the free teeth whitening offer. You know, we're trying to get new patients into a dental office, and so we mail to affluent people within a radius of the the dental office, and we are saying. You know, come in for your free teeth whitening. We get them in the door at the same time while they're there. They meet the doctor. We give them an amazing experience. And then before we leave, we book them for their next cleaning period, right? So mm-hmm. now we're getting them on a regular schedule where they're going to be, get their teeth cleaned twice a year. And so, yes, maybe we lost that on the, the, the free teeth whitening procedure, but that one patient's going to spend $3,500 with them over the next few years. So it was a very, um, a very good trade off to bring them in the door and have them uh, receive this free treatment. Right. Well, and that's the important thing, isn't it, is having the, the steps afterwards. Um, I mean, it's not enough just to bring them in, because they, they may bring them in at, and break even, maybe even lose a little bit of money. Um, but the idea is to have something that can keep them coming back, right? That's right. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up because it is something that people miss. And, you know, it, it really is the what we're really looking for is the long-term customer value. We're looking for customers who are going to stick with you, not just for this one, this first transaction, but they're going to be with you a year from now, two years, three years from now. It's been one of the biggest complaints about Groupon is that, you know, people come in, they get this sweet discount, but they never show up again. Well, you've attracted the wrong kind of person. Um, so with direct mail campaigns, you know, we want to make sure that we're attracting the right people. And then we have a system in place to monetize them, that, that we're going to keep in touch with them and we're going to keep them coming back um, for more uh, services or products in the future. 
Yeah, and that's honestly where I see a lot of people fall down is that's what's always tough as a consultant is, you know, they'll say, well, help me with my marketing. And I'm like, well, tell me about your sales process. Well, why are you talking about my sales process? I told you I need marketing help. All right, and then you, you help their marketing. You make the phone ring, get people coming in, and you have some jerk answer the phone uh, or nobody greets them when they come in or they're rude to them. It's like, I don't care how good your marketing is if your people are mean, you know, and, and your food is cold and your service is slow, they ain't coming back. You know, exactly. and they probably won't spend money the first time. Exactly. Do you get into that with, with clients? Because, I mean, I know it, it kind of maybe now you've done this long enough and your clients know, but I'm sure in the beginning you had some clients uh, probably you helped grow their marketing. but Of course. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, no, I think that's a, it's, a con- it's a conversation we all have to have. I have to have with all my clients, you know, um, and it's a con- it's a constant conversation, you know, it's, the, the, there's always the the discussion. There's always a couple of dis- discussions going on. One of them being, you know, customer retention. Once we bring them in the door, how are we going to keep them a customer? How are we going to keep them buying? Another conversation is constantly the education of lifetime value and how do we keep growing it? Even if the lifetime value of the customer is good, let's not be happy with it. Let's find a way to make it even bigger. Um, there's the conversation of, how much are you willing to spend to acquire a customer? If you know that mm-hmm. the value of that customer is worth $400 over the next nine months, will you be willing to spend $200 to acquire them now? You know, or where is that bar? Where do we set that bar to make it so that you're happy as a business, bringing in enough money, and how long are you willing to wait to recoup your cost and make a, and make a profit? Right. I guess it's just it's just a learning curve, though, isn't it? I mean, there's no silver bullet. I mean, no, definitely not. Spend a dollar, then spend two, then spend three. You know, as long as <laughs> one dollar, you know, if the one dollar came back with a dollar ten, okay, it may be worth it trying again. You know, at least you didn't lose money. That's right. You know? And then, oh snap, it came back with two dollars. Whoa! I mean, there's a hundred percent return on your money. That's pretty good. Each, and you know, it's crazy. Stock market, there's doesn't it? You know what's crazy is there's conversations I've had with people where we've had that exact situation. We spent it all, we brought in two, and they still weren't satisfied with it. It was still too much risk for them. I'm like, what bank can you go to to get that kind of return on investment? Yeah. So it's surprising what businesses think is profitable and what isn't. <laughs> yeah. It's like we just spent three weeks, you spent $2,000, you made $4,500. And you're sad? Like, you know. <laughs> Why don't you spend twenty thousand dollars now and let's see if you can't bring in fifty. That's right. Uh, that's right. But but it takes a little while huh, to kind of warm them up. <laughs> oh, of course. I mean, you know, it's it, a lot of these concepts that you and I know true, and we use them every day. You know, a lot of businesses we have to educate and teach and and help them understand this this style of marketing and and the way the numbers work. Right. Um, so how does somebody know if they're ready for you? I mean, do they need to be big? Do you work with beginners? Uh, I mean, who should reach out to you? Well, I think, I think first of all, I would hope that, you know, anyone who's listening today and has a, a glimpse of seeing that, oh, direct mail could work for me, I hope they go out and get my book. That's the first thing, and that's it's called The Direct Mail Solution. And as I mentioned, you can get it at thedirectmailbook.com or go to Amazon or wherever and pick it up. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the first step is really get my book. Second group is, you know, if you come to a point where you're looking through it and you're like, I don't want to do this to myself, you know, who, who, who should work with me? Um, people should always at least reach out. I've got different, I've got uh, courses and newsletters and coaching programs. So if they're not large enough for, to retain our services to manage the campaigns for them, the chances are we've got something else that would be a perfect fit for what they're looking to do. So um, whether it's further education or having, you know, uh, someone hold their hand and kind of coach them through the process or, or whatnot. So, so we have a, a whole list of services, and, and those can be found at simpson-direct.com. Okay. Very cool. And those will be uh, in the show notes here, and they can, um, so they can access this at the saleswhisperer.com forward slash Craig dash Simpson. Well, thank you, sir. This has been quite illustrative. That's my uh, <laughs> 25-cent word for the day, illustrative. That's four syllables. I mean, that's pretty good. I like <laughs> it. 
I don't know if I'd use it in print, you know, because you got to use smaller words, don't you, for print? That's right. You sure do. <laughs> All right. I was able to, to enunciate it and pronounce it here live on the call. There you uh, go. So thanks for, uh, for coming on and uh, being a sport and subjecting yourself to my rapid-fire questions. Uh, it was excellent. Well, uh, great. I'm just uh, glad to be a part of it, and I'm, I'm appreciative of you having me on your show today. All right. Have a great day. Okay. You too. Hey, what do you think about that? Uh, apologies for the um, lower quality. Craig wasn't on a uh, computer, so we had to use a conference style, and those are always um, a little bit um, less clear. But the information was not. That's why I wanted to, to get him on there. You know, he, he gave some great advice uh, how to get started. This guy does a ton of mailings, almost one a day, uh, just for the uh, an RV dealer, right? And he knows what he's talking about, but getting started, you know, like he said, start with your 50 be- There's Decker the Diabolical behind me barking at my nephew doing some work in the house. Uh, but like he said, start with your 50 best customers and send them a letter. Make them an offer. Give them a coupon, right? Give them something um, you've never offered before. And if you don't want to discount things, uh, then add some things on, and but keep it the same price, right? Basically offer them the platinum package at the gold price. Uh, or come mix and match things, mix and match new offers and, and test things out to see if you want to offer that to the general public. Uh, that could be a new flavor, you know, a new offering that you can provide. And direct mail, again, it, it'll cut through the clutter because look back at how many you have sent, and it's, it's probably low to maybe none. So a letter will stand out. And then look at your own desk, right? How many letters do you get? How many offers do you get? Now, you get a lot of junk mail, I'm sure. But when you get an envelope that's addressed to you, especially if it's hand addressed, don't you put that at the top of the pile, maybe set everything aside and open it right there as you're standing at the mailbox. It piques your interest, okay? And that's what direct mail can do. Um, But again, there's no guarantees. If you're looking for a guarantee, here's here's one thing I can guarantee. The government is going to tax the snot out of you even when you die, okay? And that's the other guarantee, that you're going to die. Nobody makes it out of this world alive, okay? Uh, There are no guarantees in business. If there were, if I could guarantee you a 20% return, let's say, and you have a $100,000 business, then I could charge you $19,000, and it would be worth it because you're going to make at least $1,000 back, right? Or let's say... um, you pay me ten thousand dollars, and then you make twenty. So that's basically a hundred percent return on your money. You, you paid ten, you got an additional ten back. So, and of course, those just don't happen. So you've got to get out there and test things. And you know the old Facebook adage, you know that I added to: be bold, move fast, and break things. Right? I added the be bold. Uh, you know, I love the saying: if you're not pissing somebody off by noon, you're not marketing. And I've said it before as well, if you were arrested for being in sales and marketing, if you were arrested for being an entrepreneur, would there be enough evidence to convict you? So making direct mail happen is a good piece of evidence that you are an entrepreneur. So give it a try. Uh, Go back and visit the site, thesaleswhisper.com forward slash Craig dash Simpson. And you can get the notes and the links to his book and other things we talked about there. Um, And as I mentioned before, If you want a special offer, a little free report I'm giving out right now, uh, text the word sales to 96,000. I'm testing out a little uh, text message marketing from my friends over at Social Fuse. Um, If you want some info on that, uh, you can also visit uh, the resources page on the Sales Whisperer, or I'll have that on the Craig Simpson uh, page as well. Got a free trial for you on social fuse. But again, if you want the the free report, check out sales, uh, text the word sales to 96,000. As always, thanks for listening. Be sure to show some online love with some five-star reviews and always remember to sell different. 